Andrew Shore here at the Pennsylvania Convention Center as there are 5,000 experts in organ transplant from around the world here for the American Transplant Congress. And they're discussing the latest science in organ transplant. We caught up with Dr. Jason Christie from Penn Medicine. He's an expert in lung transplant and he has a hopeful story to tell for patients. Dr. Christie, related to lung transplantation as opposed to kidney or liver, other organs, there's a shortage, isn't there? Uh, so lungs are, the, uh, are probably the organ that's in the most shortage. Uh, for one reason, the patients who are going to receive them are the sickest. Uh, they, if your lungs fail, you don't have a lot of other options. You don't have dialysis. Um, but also, so it becomes very emergent. Um, but also the lungs themselves are really fragile and they uh, don't uh, do well when, uh, uh, when taken out of the body. And so uh, the selection of the organs is a little bit tighter. And so uh, in terms of organ shortages, the lungs are probably in the, uh, 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 probably the hardest organs to harvest from, uh, from donors. Let's understand what you're trying to do to expand the available organ supply, if you will. So the first is, are there ways you're developing to try to understand which lungs may be suitable for transplant? So there are a lot of investigators trying to understand how we can better predict which donor lungs will do well after transplant. Uh, some people now are investigating um, uh, ways to use genomic approaches or uh, the expression of certain inflammatory mediators in the lung in the donor prior to harvest to see whether or not that's associated with how well the organ can do immediately after harvest. The idea that we can then predict so that we could potentially expand the donor pool in the low risk uh, organs. Let me see if I understand that. So you mean they're actually studying the actual biology of the donor lungs and understand which ones may be strongest. So th that's one big part of it. One part of it is using uh, gene expression to predict the outcomes and the other part of it is understanding the mechanisms in the biology so that you can actually think about pre-treating the donor in a mechanistic specific way prior to implanting the lung so that you can prevent the lung from having a vigorous acute lung injury response after the transplant. Now let's talk about another approach. I understand there's also been research to say can we test out donor lungs outside the body prior to putting them in the, pers the sick person who really needs it. Yeah, so this is a really exciting area of lung transplant. And uh, there was a New England Journal article recently by the group in Toronto uh, where they tested a series of patients uh, where they took don uh, donor lungs that would otherwise have been not used for transplant because they were judged to be uh, uh, not suitable by not having the right oxygen exchange or other parameters that people use to select the donor lungs. Um, and they took them out of the body and placed them in a novel machine, an ex vivo lung perfusion machine. Outside the body. Outside the body with, it, with, a bl with um, a perfusate flowing through the vessels and a ventilator ventilating the lungs to mimic normal physiology. Uh, and they followed those lungs over time outside of the body to see which lungs actually improved. Um, and the majority of the lungs actually improved to the point that they were thought to be suitable for transplant. They were then transplanted into actual human recipients and that they performed better in general than the historical rate uh, in, the, in historical lung transplants. I want to see if I get this right. So it's almost like a training for lungs that are being donated to get them in shape for transplant where otherwise they might have failed. All right, well, it's conditioning it. And, and in many ways, we're limited by our assessment in the donor because there's a lot going on in the donor. The donor's critically ill and other organs are being harvested. They're getting fluids and different therapies. And so we're left with relatively crude parameters of how that lung might potentially um, uh, perform after. Uh, about 15 to 30 percent of the lungs get uh, a severe uh, uh, acute lung injury syndrome called primary graft dysfunction where the lungs themselves fill up with fluid, get swollen, uh, get filled with inflammatory cells and those people do much worse after transplant who have that problem. And so that limitation and that fear in many ways makes uh, people who procure the organs worried 
about taking certain organs. So we've been trying to approach it by, um, by trying to assess the organs and the, and the mechanisms and try to predict it so we can feel safer. But this other approach and team with that allows you to take the lungs outside of the body and allows you to then over time condition uh, and assess the physiology of those lungs and see if they're better able to be transplanted after this thing. So the bottom line is there may be more suitable organs for people who need it when we've had such a critical shortage. Well that's the goal. The goal is expanding the donor pool but also doing it safer and really assessing those lungs. And, and the future is also that if we can understand some of these mechanisms during this ischemic period where the lung is outside of the body before it gets reperfused in the lungs, if we can understand the mechanisms of that damage, we could then pre-treat these organs because we could either give it to them inhaled or we could run it through the blood system, pre-treat them either with uh, uh, gene therapy for the particular genes or with therapies that are guided by our mechanistic understanding now. So certain lungs may need certain things because of that donor's own preponderance to these injuries. And so it allows us to essentially administer personalized medicine to the donor lung prior to putting it in the body. Well, we've been talking cool. about personalized medicine a lot, but now we're talking about personalized medicine of an organ yeah. outside a body. Very uh, cool and I think hopeful for people. One last thing, and that is in the older patient. Severe lung disease, their lungs are failing, hope for a transplant, but then you say, this is an older, very sick person. What's your feeling about expanding options for them? Well, the, um, one of the sessions at, at uh, the conference today is going to be dealing with um, uh, transplanting older patients and certain ex uh, centers' experience of transplanting those older patients. We've had relatively arbitrary age limits for years. Uh, original age limits in lung transplantation were 60. Um, more recently, people have talked about 65 as a relative age limit, but people's physiology may be very different, and age is many times just a number. And so what we're learning about is which particular types of patients as they get older could be more uh, um, likely to do well after a transplant. And uh, this is uh, uh, an, an area that uh, is actively under research and different programs have different parameters. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, expand the size of the recipient pool as well as the donor pool. Dr. Christie, patients who listen to this, you're their barometer on how things are going in your field. Are you encouraged? Oh yeah, lung transplantation is very new, right? Every year, so in, in one of my other lives, I also uh, help to work the International Society of Heart and Lung Transplants patient registry. So we do the report every year, and every year the outcomes get better, All right? So yeah, I'm very encouraged. And the reasons why the outcomes are held back where as a field we're acting so hard to address. How we can uh, improve the donor lung so that when you put it into the recipient, it doesn't fail. How we can then handle the longer term complications. And some of these advances in genomic medicine, um, in understanding the basic biology of these things, uh, will help this really relatively new field uh, to improve over time. So yeah, I'm really encouraged. Well, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thanks. A hopeful story for people who are in need of lung transplant. I'm Andrew Shore.